Slade Gorton works for me. Tuesday, get out and vote for Slade, and don't let anything stop you. Get out of here. Slade! 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 Help me! Help me! All of you! Stop people from voting for Slade Gorton. Paid for people trying to stop other people from voting for Slade Gorton Committee. The nitrous has kicked in. No, it's actually, it's really excited. We're very excited here because everybody is anticipating that day that we have tomorrow. Everyone's so excited about tomorrow. The president is going to be visiting tomorrow. And, ladies and gentlemen, the kingdom will be open for business. Tomorrow, absolutely, the first Seahawks game. And I have to say, I think it's going to be great tomorrow to see them putting on the pads and the helmets for the big game. And that's just the fans. You know, it's just... <laughs> things are still dropping they've mostly got the problem taken care of but I you know in fact it's hard hat day at the dome the first thousand fans get construction hard hats which is good uh, the kingdom fans as you know were renowned around the league for being the noisiest in the NFL they had to the kingdom rule it's a foul ah, everybody's screaming I, I don't think that's gonna be such a problem tomorrow you know <laughs> I'm, I'm just guessing this is just a wild guess that the anthem won't be sung with the usual gusto it'll be like the bombs <laughs> And I think the wave is going to kind of look like, uh, it'll be like, like, that. Like, uh, like that. And when they want to scream obscenities down to the players, the fans, so, and they can say, you suck. Pass it on. Pass it on. Pass it on. Pass it on. Like that. So now that they have. Anyway, now that they have the kingdom under control, the city is actually trying to tackle a problem that's right outside the gnome, which you might have seen. Uh, this in the news that thousands and thousands of starlings have taken roost in Occidental Park and they say that they're ruining everything. You know, the city wants to get rid of them and return the park to its natural setting as a place for wine-swilling, barfing <laughs> drunks, you know, which I think is good. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's really, I guess, getting bad down there. We've got some news footage that was shot just the other day, if you can see. Look, look at that. It's just, apparently, there was a field trip there. Uh, uh, starlings are getting all over everyone. Run it, they were running towards Elliott Bay there, I guess. It's <laughs> something. Some nice new houses in there. Anyway, uh, there's, I guess the city has tried hoses, firecrackers, banging like pans together. Now they're going to get really serious. They're going to broadcast the poetry readings from the Elliott Bay bookstore <laughs> into the thing. Get that going. And I guess when the Stones come to town in a few weeks, they're asking if Keith Richards will just walk around in there and just... <laughs> Get the starlings, scare the starlings away. And if all else fails, I guess they're going to have Ken Schramm host a town meeting right there, which is uh, <laughs> the natural enemy, the natural enemy of starlings. And that should, I guess, take care of it. But uh, the president, like I said, is going to be in, he's going to be in town here tomorrow. He's going to the, the market, the Pike Place Market. And he says he doesn't want any favors. So just like everyone else, the Secret Service is going to have to keep circling around, looking for a parking spot, just <laughs> circling. <laughs> few hours and you know it's dangerous at the market those, those guys are always throwing the fish you know so that the secret service they're trained they're prepared to take a trout you know for the president <laughs> comes near and they're right there it's in the in the line of fire fish fire so they'll be doing that so he's he's in town to do one last fundraiser for ron sims but i don't know 
I'm just asking myself, he's playing the sax by the big pig, you know, he's gonna have the thing open there. I don't think that's gonna turn the tide, I don't know. But anyway, I just hope the president doesn't hold up a gooey duck like last time, which <laughs> led to a very unfortunate photograph that was published, so I just hope that that doesn't happen. Anyway, anyway, ooh, yeah. Now, I know it's not a pretty image, is it? You know. <laughs> It's, uh, it's November, and that is, as you all know, the big ratings month. All the networks are pulling out all the stops and the big specials and new shows, and we're no exception. We've got a hot new show that I'm sure you're going to love. I want you to take a look right now. Oh, my God. Come on, Don. I tried to be faithful. I tried as hard as I could, but it was right there. It was right in front of me. I couldn't say no. From Aaron Spelling, the creator of Beverly Hills 90210, Melrose Place, and Models, Inc., comes the scintillating new hit of the TV season. Oh, my God. Prostitutes Limited. <laughs> Prostitutes Limited stars an aging but still attractive blonde actress as the madam and a whole bunch of beautiful young people as the prostitutes. <laughs> Prostitutes Limited has all the stuff you like on those other shows, but there's one crucial difference. They're prostitutes. See, that's the hook. They're a bunch of beautiful young people trying to get by. No different from those other shows you like to watch, except for that little something extra, if you know what I mean. And I think you do, because I've already said it. But I'll say it again, because I like to. They're prostitutes. <laughs> to put it another way, the actors on those other shows and the actors on Prostitutes Limited are pretty much the exact same. The one and only difference is that those other actors are not pretending to be prostitutes. And these ones are pretending to be prostitutes. Get it? You with me? Let me give you an example. Look at this woman. She's going into the grocery store. But she's not a prostitute, so big deal, right? Now, here's the exact same woman going into the exact same grocery store, but this time, she's a prostitute. A lot more interesting, huh? Yeah, that's what I thought. Because, I mean, even though you know the Prostitutes Limited actors aren't really prostitutes, it doesn't matter. Because even just pretending to be prostitutes makes it better than if they weren't pretending to be prostitutes. I don't know why, it just does. So what the hell? They're prostitutes on prime time. Sure, it's pretend, but wow, what a concept. It blows my mind just to think about it. And I like to think about it a lot. And so will you. Every week for a whole hour on Fox. Uh, one more thing. Aaron Spelling promises that you'll never see his daughter, Tori Spelling, on Prostitutes Limited. <laughs> Nor will he ever hire Melanie Hutzel, that blonde girl from Saturday Night Live, to play the part of Tori Spelling on Prostitutes Limited. All right, stay with us. We've got a great show, and we will be right back. So you can talk. Good afternoon and welcome to the Jimmy Jones Show. My guest today is Senate candidate Arlen Greeley, who says he wants to go to Washington to get tough on crime. Welcome, Mr. Greeley. Thank you, Jimmy. You know something? I do want to get tough on crime because as a society, I think we've all had enough and we're angry about it. I know I am. And apparently, Mr. Greeley, that's not the only thing you're angry about. Mr. Greeley thinks that his wife dresses like a slut and he doesn't like it. That, that, that's not true. Who told you that? In fact, he once even locked his wife in the closet to prevent her from going out of the house with a pullover sweater on. Uh, I think you have me confused with someone else. So let's meet her right now. Can we bring on his wife, Mrs. Christine Greeley? Come on out, Christine. I, I don't know this woman. My wife's name is Betty. I'm just trying to have fun. He can't handle the fact that I am attractive to other men. I, I don't know you. I, I've never seen you before. There's just been a terrible mix-up here, that's all. Okay, you have a comment? Yeah, I think if my wife wanted to leave the house dressed like that, I would lock her up, too. I agree with him. <laughs> I did not lock this woman up. 
I mean, it would be different if, if he actually ever made time for me, but oh no, that's too hard. But oh, you always seem to have time for your drinking buddies, don't you, Arlen? I don't even drink. Okay, let's welcome Mr. Greeley's drinking buddies, Roy, Slim, and Delma. Oh, hey, Arlen. I've never seen these people before in my life. You know, Never. <laughs> there wouldn't be a problem if she just lightened up. We're only taking him out for a good time. Oh, yeah, a good time with prostitutes. Oh, Arlen don't go for prostitutes. <laughs> he says he likes them fresh. That's a lie. <laughs> he says the fresh ones make him feel younger. I don't know any of these people. How can you say that? I've never seen you before. Oh, and I suppose that you've never even seen your own daughter. What? Daddy! This is Mr. Greeley's daughter, Cindy, with whom he has not spoken in over five years. I don't have any children. How can you reject me like this, your own flesh and blood? Now, tell us, tell us about your father, Cindy. Well, he's changed. He's not the same daddy I used to know. You never knew me! <laughs> I don't know you! Johnny says that to punish me. To punish me for living with... Curtis. <laughs> now let's all welcome out Cindy's boyfriend, Curtis. Oh, come on. Yeah. I don't care if he's black, Daddy. I love him. Mr. Greeley, I can live with you never accepting me or allowing me into your house. But how can you call yourself a politician if you won't even kiss your own grandchild? This is outrageous! I don't know this man! Now, are you saying that because he's black? No, I'm not saying it because he's black. I don't know him. Why don't you just admit it, Arlen? You're a racist. You can't accept the idea of your daughter having a child with a black man. I am not a racist. And I suppose that you're going to tell us that you don't know Hunter and Mike. <laughs> Okay, all right, hold it, stop! This is completely outrageous. Anybody watching this show would think that I'm an insensitive, philandering, drunken, pedophiliac racist, which is a lie! You've slandered my good name, you ruined my chances for election, and I'm gonna sue you for everything you got! Okay, all right, look, let's, let's get this straightened out here. Oh. You know what we did? Oh, uh, I am sorry. Uh, insensitive, philandering, drunken, pedophiliac racist. Our next week, Bernie typed the, you, you, you typed the wrong date. He typed the wrong date in there. I'm sorry. That's next week. You got the date wrong. But uh, you guys just come back next week. It's we fine. still get paid for this, don't we? Oh, yeah, you get paid. Sure, just come back next week. So, I am, unfortunately, we are out of time, but oh, I want to thank Senator Greeley for uh, uh, coming by to share his views, and I want you to join us tomorrow on the show, and we, our guest will be Senate, uh, Senator Slade Gorton, where he, uh, <laughs> will he, Slade Gorton, does he run like a girl? Join us tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>
You know, I, I, I don't really feel like practicing center snaps today. Why? What's wrong? Wayne, can we talk? Sure. Sit down. You know, Wayne, I've been thinking lately about all this practicing hiking the football. Yeah? Do you know how long we've been practicing center snaps? Well, uh, we started in the eighth grade, and we've been doing it every Saturday since. That's right. And when was the last time that we actually played in a football game? Well, um, there was the, um, the, the time... Never. Well, there's that eighth grade. Never! Wayne, we have never played in a football game. Okay, so we've never played in a football game. So? So why do we keep practicing? I thought you enjoyed it. Sure I do. Sure I do, but you know, maybe it's time we stop practicing center snaps, you know? I mean, the whole thing's starting to feel kind of weird to me anyhow. <laughs> Yeah, but we were just getting good at it. Yes, we were. Yes, we were, Wayne. Yes, we were. We were getting very, very good at it. In fact, we are probably the two best insurance adjusters in the world at hiking the football. But, Wayne, maybe, maybe it's time to move on. Maybe it's time to conquer new worlds. You mean like teeing up the ball for field goals? <laughs> well, that or... Maybe even something else. Are you mad at me for fumbling a few hikes last weekend? No, I'm not mad at you, Wayne. In fact, that kind of broke the monotony for me of what has become an excruciatingly, mind-numbingly dull, dull, boring, dull routine of practicing center snaps. Jeez, you're, you're serious about this. You really don't want to practice center snaps anymore. No. No, I don't want to practice center snaps anymore. There, I said it. I'm sorry, Wayne. I'm sorry. I just hope that you can forgive me. Yeah, sure, I guess. I can't say I'm not going to miss it. Yeah, me too. Me too. Still friends? Friends. Hey, how about one more for old time's sake? No. Come on, wait, Danny, I can't. Come on. Wait, one more for old time's I've got to run. Hey, Danny, can't. Danny. Can't. Danny. Ready to practice some center snaps? John Report. I'm John. Here's my report. Well, Cairo AM Radio aired the Fantasy World Series final game last Thursday, where the Mariners beat Atlanta 6-5 on a Ken Griffey two-run homer in the ninth. After the make-believe game, announcer Dave Niehaus said he was planning to celebrate by checking into the Olympic Four Seasons with Cindy Crawford and Sharon Stone. <laughs> the Smith Tower bathrooms have now been converted into no-flush urinals. Once the urinals are full, they will be dumped out into the window onto the streets of Pioneer Square below, where no one will notice. <laughs> Seattle Sonics guard Gary Payton sings a song called Livin' Legal and Large on a compilation of... Rec of a compilation record of rap songs. Also singing on the album is Sonic's 12th man, Steve Scheffler, <laughs> who has a song called Sitting and Watching Other Guys Play Basketball. <laughs> U.S. West Communications must pay back $7.5 million that they overbilled to customers with pagers. U.S. West will notify their customers about the refunds by beeping them in a theater during the most dramatic scene of the movie. <laughs> A proposal would boost the marriage license fee in King County from $16 to $31. On hearing the news, newlywed Bill Gates exclaimed, Boy, I'm glad I got married when I did. <laughs> Pacific Northwest Magazine announced that they will stop publishing at the end of the year and will be consolidated into Seattle Magazine. Publishers later admitted that they actually had stopped publishing months ago, but that no one had noticed. 
Initiative 607, the measure that pits false teeth makers against the dentists, has led to some spirited debate. Following a heated debate yesterday, 14 people were treated for bite wounds. <laughs> Finally, the League of Women Voters auction last week included bids for a lunch with Seattle Times editorial page editor Mindy Cameron. It brought in a lot more money than the other media item for auction, splitting an ego with Ken Schramm. <laughs> this has been the John Report. Thank you, and we'll be right back. Slade Gordon accuses Ron Sims of repeatedly missing important meetings. Here to answer those charges is Ron Sims. <laughs> You're sure you told him what time to be here? I told him. Mm -hmm. You know what? Ron Sims isn't even going to dignify those charges by answering them. He's here. Hold on. Ron Sims, U.S. Senate. He'll be there.